Welcome to another new episode of the Declutter Me podcast with myself, Shalina. I hope you're well wherever you are in the world. Thank you for listening and following me. If you love this podcast, I would appreciate it if you would press like, send a review, do five stars, share it with your friends and family. It would make my day. Thank you so much. Um, So this week, I wanted to focus on the kitchen and in particular, the kitchen zones. So I know I've talked in other episodes before about decluttering and organizing kitchens, but we've never talked specifically about the zoning of it, which is very important for me. And people don't realize when they are working, you know, when they are using their kitchen, that actually you should have zones. Everything is in different places and it's random and it just doesn't make sense. So that's what I want to focus on today. Um, The kitchen is a major hub of all houses. So you have your family, your flatmate, your friends, your family, your maids. Everyone has to go in there to get the food, drinks and other things if random things are in there as well. So it has to have a place for everything in the kitchen. It can't be, you know, randomly thrown into places because it's too important a zone or an area um, and it's often limited in space, um, you know, whether in the counters or on the, in the cupboards. So it has to be properly organized and decluttered. Um, if there is a place for everything, you should be able to find everything in less than five seconds moving forward. So that's why I always say you should have zones in your kitchen. So let's start. First, look at the food in your cupboards and declutter the items that have expired smell funky or a moldy or you just don't eat. Um, Did you see the news on Marks and Spencers UK have uh, removed the best before on fresh produce to reduce food wastage, which is amazing. And it's, um, I love it. You know, I, I hate seeing food wastage. I see so much food wastage when I go into clients' houses because things are being hidden away in the back of cupboards. It's gone old, it's gone moldy, it's gone tasteless, or they've just never touched it. You know, they bought pasta from Italy many years ago and never used it. Um, and, you know, and I also see it in fridges as well, you know, with people buying food and then not using it and cooking it. So this is great because, you know, best before dates, even though I do look at them a lot, um, that, you know, sometimes things can last a bit longer. Um, but, do look at it, you know, do smell it, do taste it. If it is funky or moldy, please get rid of it, you know, um, especially if it's like three or four years old. Um, one client I had, his stuff, he brought the stuff over from UK like 10 years ago and the tin exploded in his kitchen cupboard. Uh, thankfully, the cupboard was all right, but it was like all a mess on the shelf and everything. So we had to clean that. Um, so yeah, do think about that. Like, you know, you have to get rid of stuff sometimes. So that's the food. Next, look at the crockery and the pans and remove the ones that are broken, not used, or are just plain skanky. Um, then do the same with the kitchen appliances and remove the ones that are broken and not used. You shouldn't need three juicers. You shouldn't need two food processors. If a blender is broken and your maid has kept it in the cupboard, remove it. I don't know why they do this. They break something and then they don't admit to it. But then they say they need something new, but don't get rid of the old thing. It's really, really irritating. Um, So make sure that if they do break something, that they get it out of the cupboard because it's just wasting up valuable real estate. And most people don't have a lot of real estate in the kitchen. So let's let's remove the things we don't need in there. Um, Finally, remove, you know, the cutlery, mix the mismatch of cutlery, the ones from the delivery food. Collect them and give them to security or the maids or to mosques to use during Ramadan. Um, you don't need them in-house. So your maid might collect 50 chopsticks from the delivery, but she doesn't need to. So I, I know they love holding them, but just remove them. Like get them out of the house, give them away or put them in recycling. So once you've done this decluttering, we can start with the zoning. Um, so I like to zone out the kitchen so it's easy to put the items away into their proper areas. So these are my zones. Number one is the everyday stuff. So that's always close to the dishwasher and the sink. That's your crockery, your cutlery and glassware that you use every day. And that should be as close as possible to that at the sink and dishwasher because you're washing and putting away, putting, you know, washing and putting away. Zone two is your cooking area. So that's located close to the oven or the range or the grill. So that would be your pots, 
your cutting boards, your cooking utensils, your mixing bowls, and your baking items. Also include there your regular use spices, sauces, and you know cans of food like tomatoes. That will be your cooking area. Zone three is your pantry. So that's all the other cooking items that you use. So your pasta, your dry goods, your spices, um, and you can even put the baking stuff there as well. Um, you can also put appliances there as well because, you know, especially for baking, you have your appliances and the baking items. So put them all together. So that's zone three. Zone four is accessories and storage. And that's usually near the fridge if possible. So that will be your Tupperware, your food wrap, those kind of items, bowls with lids on them. That will all go in zone four. Next is my favorite zone, which is the coffee and the bar. So that's all your coffee cups, your coffee accessories, your barware such as wine, glasses, etc. Also your tea and your coffee and the jugs for the tea um, and uh, Turkish coffee and all those things. They should all be together in the same place and that should be near electrical uh, plugs and near the ports. So I often see in many houses here, there's not enough electrical sockets in the house, um, especially in kitchens. So it's a pain, but make sure the coffee um, section, coffee zone, um, which is zone five, is near an electrical socket. Um, finally, we have zone six, which is under the sink. That's all your cleaning supplies, your garbage bags, recycling. Um, any overstock for cleaning should go in a storeroom or a shed, but it should be away from food. I often see these cleaning things next to food, which is always not a good thing, especially if they leak. So please put them away from all your food. Um, if you have under the stairs or a storeroom or a shed or some storage area somewhere else, use that. If you don't have much storage space, then don't buy items in bulk. Just buy the items that you need and put them under the sink. Items that you do not use often, such as serving dishes or special dining sets, should be at the top shelves of the cupboards, which are not being used every day. Um, you know, in those corner units, you know, where it's difficult to access, you can put them there or in the dining room in a dining cupboard, you know, uh, a sideboard. Um, also, non-kitchen items such as tools, light bulbs and bags, they should be in another area. So they should be in a storeroom um, or in, you know, a, a cupboard near the front area. And you can also put the kids stuff there. So the school bags there, um, a, a station for all the letters and sports activities and all their bits and pieces as well can be at the front door as well and not in the kitchen. So make sure that you have these six zones in your kitchen. If you have a really big kitchen and you have more space, you can put the other items such as the light bulbs and um, tools in the kitchen as well. But try and reduce the amount of non-kitchen stuff in your kitchen. So those are my top tips for the zones today. Let me know if that works for you and if you can find your stuff in less than five seconds moving forward. Thanks for listening. As always, I'll speak to you next week. Take care. Bye.